One day on a nice sunny morning, I decided to take Sam out for a lovely walk in the sunshine. But as we were walking, I noticed something strange. <laughs> yeah, something weird was watching us. I decided to grab Sam and make a run for it. <laughs> After losing the weird clown and, and Sam, I was very worried. But safe in the knowledge that I'd finally lost that creepy guy. Although, where did I place Sam? After a while, I, I still couldn't shake the feeling like something was still watching me. <coughs> something evil. I had to get home and talk to Gal, my trusted demon friend. <sighs> yeah, <laughs> everything's fine. Everything's... God, what's up with you now? Oh, it's nothing, Gal. It's just that... I don't know, I feel like I've been followed all day and I've just been seeing weird things and I feel like I'm kind of maybe going a little bit out of my mind you know that that that's all really yeah yeah it wouldn't really surprise me at this point I mean look at you you're a mess you know I was just thinking about something and I think I'm going to share it with everybody out there I, I've been thinking a lot about Stephen King's It um Stephen King's famous novel uh, It about a killer clown that kind of preys on the fears and, and weaknesses of, of, of children in, in a small town of Derry, Maine. Um, it's one of my all-time favourite novels, and I've been reading it for, God, decades. Um, and I was just thinking about adaptations and the pros and cons behind the two major adaptations from the Stephen King's novel, uh, It, and, uh, and, and kind of comparing the two and seeing, you know, which is the better one. The world of Stephen King's It has terrified people across generations, from the 1990s uh, TV adaptation to the more recent 2017 film adaptation, It. And with that, Pennywise scaring a whole new generation of audience members, each bringing Pennywise the dancing clown to life in very distinct and memorable ways. So let's grab our paper boats and delve deep into the sewers of Derry, Maine, as we compare these two adaptations from Stephen King's famous novel of It. So it's got to be said that Tim Curry's portrayal of Pennywise the Dancing Clown is truly a horror icon. So much so that I even have him on my socks. I mean, what is there to say? But I mean, his performance of Pennywise the Clown is, is like a masterclass in balancing humour with horror. Won't do any good to run, girly boy. <laughs> Curry's clown is this weirdly approachable character, essentially just being like an everyday normal guy, but obviously with a clown suit on and, and face paint. But there's something slightly off about him. He's weirdly approachable, yet something that you don't want to go anywhere near. I guess it's that kind of realism that you get in, in, in Tim Curry's Pennywise that, that you don't get from later incarnations. It's a real guy. He's off. He's creepy. And with the true horrors of the real world out there, and obviously with things like, you know, various different kinds of predators out there and, and that kind of disturbing stuff, like, that's all too real. And it's really in there within Tim Curry's performance. But at the same time, he's kind of playful and weird and cheesy and, and all these kind of off-putting things that kind of reflect the true character from the novel. He's a mask. If Pennywise is anything, he's just a mask for children to kind of fall into that trap until he really shows himself for what he truly is. And it's never been represented better, in my opinion, than Tim Curry's performance in the 1990s adaptation. I, Georgie, am Pennywise the Dancing Clown. You are Georgie. So now we know each other. <laughs> Key, right? I guess so. Bill Skarsgård's Pennywise, on the other hand, is a whole of the beast. I mean, with heavy kind of makeup and prosthetics and, and modern day special effects, um, it makes kind of 
Skarsgård's portrayal of Pennywise, more otherworldly, alien, slightly odd, but then also it kind of delves deeper and, 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 and I guess kind of travels the lore from the, the book uh, a lot more kind of closely than the 1990s was capable of doing. And what I think is a little bit more interesting about the, the Skarsgård's um, portrayal of, of Pennywise and the film as a whole is that it, it, it relies a lot more on its practical and, and, and CGI special effects and almost to the detriment of that movie, whereas the original, the 1990s adaptation was kind of more just real world. It was, you know, heavily relying on the actor's performance, on on the building of tension and the creeping dread that kind of came out just naturally via the characters and the setting and that kind of thing. And in the Skarsgård version, it's more kind of quick, fast, quick pace, whip, 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 big CGI special effects that for me, personally for me, takes away from the horror, from the creepiness and the weirdness and the otherworldliness of Pennywise and the story of it in general. <laughs> What I love about the kids from the 1990s adaptation is they feel like literally real life children that have been plucked from a 1950s coming of age story. The kids performances are truly endearing and you really believe in their relationships, their friendships, their fears, their joys, their laughter. Um, yeah, it is a little bit dated. It is a bit kind of sitcom-y, it is a bit kind of uh, over dramatic in certain in certain places and certain parts of the dialogue but they're still really enduring and you really feel the childhood innocence beam through the screen from that 1990s adaptation and to me it's something that always just kind of draws me into that to that movie for all its kind of downsides that you can that you can bring up those performances especially from those children um, really are a highlight in the in the in the first adaptation of, of, of it how do you know to work well, of course it will. Why wouldn't it? Yeah, but how do you know? I just know. Yeah, yeah, he just knows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, okay. So, you know, in comparison to the 2017 movie, um, you know, the kids are, are, to me, the performances are, are almost as good. I think they're the best part in both adaptations. Um, I think that's one of the kind of uh, things that I struggle with with both of these adaptations is that for, for all their positives and faults, they're actually kind of similar. Um, I don't know if that's something that really puts me off the more modern day version because ultimately if they're very similar then what was the point? But having said that, I think one of the positives for the for the remake is that it's more modernised. It's brought up to more contemporary standards and therefore you can kind of sympathise and uh, you know identify more with the characters which you know does make a certain amount of sense. With the more modern film having more modern film sensibilities, it being tighter paced, it's kind of you know, it rides along, it goes bang, 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 bang. You kind of get to know the kids really quickly. They kind of form their bonds in a very kind of naturalistic, more kind of modern contemporary setting. And they form bonds over things that you probably did yourself as a child, because I think most of us now, you know, I don't want to sound like kind of, you know, ageist, but most of us don't really have that kind of 1950s childhood aesthetic to fall back on. Having said that though, I'm a massive fan of, of, of kind of period pieces and I still would really love to see a retelling of it over a larger story arc over, you know, maybe 10, 15 episodes of a, of a Netflix special, say, or an Amazon special that is still set in the 1950s. I could go along with that, but I understand completely why the 2017 uh, 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 adaptations decided to modernise, um, uh, you know, the kids and the time setting and I think it really works in that regard. After all, who doesn't like Stranger Things, right? <laughs> hmm. Now, here's one of the big ones. This is, I think, one of the subjects that most people kind of argue about, especially from the, from the kind of 1990s original adaptations uh, point of view. Um, the original miniseries relied heavily on its practical effects. Um, the vast majority of the performances and, and, and the effects generally were practical. Um, a lot of it were, were, was kind of basic makeup or um, very simplistic kind of like masks and things like that. Um, 
And, you know, we're going to obviously talk about the end of the uh, <laughs> of the movie and its reliance on a giant animatronic spider. Now. What I will say about the 1990s adaptation is that I think some of the things that it suffers from is that it's, it, it, for me personally, it's the lack of gore, the lack of actual violence. I think if we could have seen a bit more of that, obviously we, we know that it was made in the 90s and it's a television film, basically. So it had to restrict a lot of its kind of more graphic sequences. But if it had have done, or the, if there had been a, an extended cut, let's say, I think that would have been the much more preferred kind of cut of the movie if it ever existed which i don't think it ever did um but you know having said that the giant spider at the end it has been said by others to look absolutely ridiculous and cheesy and silly it is linked in with the book um if you've ever read the book it's the creature is is basically some sort of other trans-dimensional god that the only way our human minds can comprehend it is some sort of giant spider um, but it's not literally a giant spider. Um, but they did chose to go that way with a very cheesy looking animatronic puppet in the 1990s version. But if you watch the documentary, which is an incredible documentary, by the way, if you haven't uh, done so, I'll, I'll put the link in the description below. Let me go find the disc. Here it is. It's called Pennywise, The Story of It. This is a really awesome documentary. Um, you can get it streaming anywhere, but I've got it on Blu-ray. It's an incredible documentary. And if you're a massive fan of... of, of, of the story of it or the show or, or the adaptations any of it um, this is a cracking cracking documentary but within this documentary they actually talk about the building of the puppet and it all comes down to money and time restraints they just didn't have time to shoot the puppet to its full potential the actual puppet itself did look a lot cooler because you see it in this documentary it looks so much like more alive it's Anim it's animated a lot more realistically it had loads more articulation and they had all these big sequences planned to to, to film like the battle between the the grown-ups and the spider and it just never happened if it had have happened who knows we might have looked on that puppet with a little bit more fondness but as as it is now i do concede that the spider puppet does look you know a little bit stupid <laughs> The 2017 version, however, relies fully on its kind of more modern day uh, uh, um, uh, effects and, and a lot of it is CGI. But what I am going to say, again, how this relates to the original 1990s version is that, in my personal opinion, the effects aren't that great. And in some of the shots, especially where uh, it has gotten bigger or it turns into something like a monster and this, that and the other, it almost looks overtly animated, like too animated, too rubbery, too cartoonish, and looks just as silly, in my personal opinion, as, as the spider does in the original 1990s version. I wasn't that impressed with the special effects. The makeup, however, is a lot better, and the gore sequences, etc., are, are where they need to be in, in the, the more modern adaptation. And that's where that's where the kind of 2017 version kind of overrides the 1990s one, in my opinion. But what I will say about the 2017 version, however, when it comes to its effects and, and atmosphere and things like that, is that it does heavily rely on that kind of new trope of horror movies where it's, it's just really quiet. Brings all the noise and all the music down, right, right down. Just fall, rah! and then it screams and runs at you, rah! and really loud. And uh, it heavily, heavily relies on that because it does it on multiple occasions during the movie. Which I think, for me, with Pennywise and the character and all that great stuff, really detracts from the scare and the kind of building of tension and atmosphere within the modern adaptation where I think the actual 1990s version does it better. What I like about the tone and atmosphere from the 1990s version of, 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 of it is I think what's great about it is, is it keeps the, the structure and format of the book where it kind of goes back and forth, back and forth. So you have a nice dose of them being kids in the 1950s for them to be adults in in the 1980s. Um, the only trouble with that is I think a lot of the adult sections of the 1990s version is quite cheesy. It's quite um, very clearly marred in that 1980s uh, or very early 90s uh, TV, um, rom-commy, 
melodrama kind of acting and I think that really detracts from the performance because actually I think a lot of the performances of the adults are quite good like the actors themselves are really talented actors from that that, that time period and they're just not the the dialogue and the direction just doesn't do them justice in my personal opinion and I think that's a real shame I think other than that though like the 1950s quaintness and the kind of building of that world you really believe in it you really get absorbed in it. And for me, that's something that in the new modern a uh, adaptation, you don't get as much. Like you, you have that nostalgia for like the 80s and things like that if you're of a certain age. But I think past that, because I didn't grow up in the 80s, I grew up in the 90s. Um, uh, it's a fine aesthetic, but other than reminding me of basically like Stranger Things and E.T. and stuff like that, like it didn't really do that much for me personally. You know, obviously, the people out there really love that at the minute especially with things like stranger things but for me it kind of got old really quick <laughs> i really enjoyed the first season of stranger things but after that it's just kind of like eh, okay that's just me you know maybe it's just me so in conclusion both the 1990 version and the 2017 version both offer very unique takes on the same story both are created and written i think with the passion for the for the original source material and that really shines through in both instances. Both instances have a really great portrayal of Pennywise the Clown. Both installments of the adaptation have great kid actors and, and the segments with the children are some of the best segments in both things. I, I think that both movies also have a, a bit of a failing in terms of their special effects here or there. Um, and I don't think one really wins out over the other. They're just very different beasts. So when deciding which adaptation actually reigns supreme, I think like it's choosing the difference between an old antique creepy jack-in-the-box and a very modern day brand new ghost train. The 1990 miniseries has obviously offered people uh, Tim Curry's Pennywise, a charming yet sinister, evil, creeping, dreaded uh, clown um, that has kind of haunted our, our minds and our sewer drains for, for decades. Whereas Bill Skarsgård's Pennywise is a lot more kind of modern and, and jump scary, but also grotesque and monstrous and, 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 you know, kind of almost like alien and from a modern day interpretation, bringing a whole new generation to the, to the story of, of it and the character of Pennywise the Clown. And for that, you cannot really say anything against him. So really, it depends what you're in the mood for. If you're in the mood for more nostalgic, steady paced, kind of tension building, creeping dread, you go to the original It miniseries. If, on the other hand, you're up for a more modern day interpretation, fast pumping, blood, ah, oh, jump scare, ah, um, with, with more CGI, more modern, updated special effects, you're probably going to be better off going to the 2017 film edition of, of It. Um, both offer their own charms, their own scares, their own new nightmares and iconic figures that will probably stay with you for the rest of your life. For me personally, I'm always more of a nostalgia guy, so my go-to is the 1990s version. But that does not mean to say that I don't also watch and enjoy the 2017 adaptation. For me personally, I don't know. I still kind of think there's an adaptation out there that is yet to be born that is the true interpretation of uh, Stephen King's uh, novel, It. I mean, out there, guys, what do you think? What is your favourite interpretation of Stephen King's It? Do you think there is a good interpretation? Do you think that either film manages to match the story to any decent degree at all? Leave your comments, like, share and subscribe, guys. And, you know, we'll, we'll speak to you soon. Bye.